Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Karamba is a riveting story about one man's efforts to bring attention to governmental malfeasance in the face of a raging HIV-AIDS epidemic in a corrupt country in sub-Saharan Africa. A compassionate government-employed medical doctor stakes everything in an attempt to save his AIDS patients and donor agencies from exploitation of a corrupt government administration, but can he? Karamba has received multiple Eric Hoffer Awards, winner First Horizon Award, winner Legacy Fiction, and Grand Prize Shortlist Finalist. The author is O.K. Yoyanakan, a former reporter, journalist, who reported for a number of newspapers in Nigeria. He also edited an evening newspaper before changing direction of his career. For nearly 20 years, he's worked in the public health programs of Carter Center Nigeria, an international non-governmental organization. Trained as a journalist, an honors degree in English, OK has attended many management courses both inside and outside Nigeria. Bringing the political dimensions of the HIV AIDS to life in his powerful book, Karamba, OK Yoganakan joins us from Nigeria on This Week in America. Hi, OK. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. What the what? I can hear you well? Yes, it's great to have you with us on the program today. Looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. Let, the name of the book is Karamba. Let's talk a little bit about that. Who exactly is Karamba? Yeah. Karamba, in that story, is a long-distance driver, truck driver, and... And you know, the kind of work they do is that they move from one place to the other, transporting goods and commodities. And because of that, they stay in very many places all along, and they are open to the human temptations, especially if you are not the kind of com who has any kind of commitments in terms of marriage or anything. So they are open to all kinds of uh, temptations from ladies and all that. Unfortunately, at that time, while um, Havon is kind of pleasure trip during his trips, uh, he contacted the AIDS, and then the story began there. It is a wonderfully written book. It's a very important book, a multiple award-winning book, Karamba. Uh, main character in the book is Dr. Sinzano. Talk about his role, because he really has gone above and beyond the call of duty, hasn't he, to try to, to do the right thing. And we'll talk about him in, in depth during the course of the interview. But give us a little background on the doctor. Yeah, the doctor, he works in the story. He works as a medical doctor in a government hospital. And you should know that most of the hospitals, at least in this part of the world, are owned by government. And in doing that, he saw firsthand how um, some of these aids, and when I say aids, assistance and support from donor organizations across the world, how their funds were being managed. He didn't like it. Meanwhile, government continues to make, um, make it look as if he's doing the best thing. Meanwhile, what the government officials were doing were kind of lining their pockets in very dishonest way to the disadvantage of those who should be benefiting from those uh, funds and donations, materials, and everything. And he thought this was getting too much. So he decided to now kind of use his friend, I call him his friend, even though he was his patient too, uh, to begin to see in what ways can we bring this to the notice of the outside world. And this was how he came in. But don't forget, in the course of the story, you will find out that he himself had to confess when he was, um, when he was um, in court, when government took him to court to strip him of his medical license and all that, he had to now confess that he was a, a, an ace patient himself. A very powerful ending of the book, Karamba. And uh, it, it's interesting that, it, that you talk about the, the ravages of the slim disease. Describe the slim disease. What, what exactly is that? 
Yeah. Slim, when you say slim, it is just the common name around that uh, locals use. Instead of saying um, HIV and all that slim, because it describes graphically what happens to the victim or to the uh, sufferer. And what you see in that kind of environment at that time was so common a thing that um, at, the, at the community level, the rural area, uh, they do not, even though there was this talk about slim, AIDS and things, they didn't see it as that. They just thought it was some kind of curse by some gods somewhere, uh, punishing some people for whatever sins and things, indiscretion or, or transgression they have committed. But slim is seen as a local, as a, as a disease that just came in and which nobody at that time could, to, um, it had nothing to do with any human beings, any man's indiscretion. Everything to do with the cause from above, the God. So um, it was widespread at that time. It was untamed, and um, unfortunately, the government wasn't helping the situation by diverting the fund. Government officials, I want to use government officials, were not helping the situation by diverting the funds. You've said that Karamba is a metaphor for government's manipulation. Talk about that. It's eye-opening as you read the book, the real motivation of the government. Talk about that, because when I say government manipulation, that really is what occurs, doesn't it? Okay, I, I can say, one, when this funds come in, government, one, government... Um, their focus is more on what they can do for themselves. When the funds come in, top officials there will find their cronies to award all kinds of strange contracts padded to the advantage and to the disadvantage of the program itself, of looking after the patients. And they knew this, that if uh, the truth became known to the world, uh, the repercussion was going to be serious in that it will affect government officials. When you say government, we are talking about human beings, really, because it is not everyone who has access. Uh, ordinary people does not have, uh, may not have access to uh, decisions being made up there. He does not have access to give his friends or cronies uh, padded contracts and things like that. They just saw it. And I think it's uh, because uh, the background of most, even those at the top in, in government at that, in that, at that time, was too near, too near poverty. Their backgrounds were too near poverty. So everybody got there to fend for himself. And, and therefore, they will do everything possible. Since it's coming from the very top to the bottom, it was easy for everybody to cover everybody at the top. So they did everything they could to ensure that the truth of their benefiting from that fund to the disadvantage of the victims themselves was covered. Don't forget also that kind of go that government described in the book is a military government. So in the, from the very nature of the government is not democratic. It is just government by a few people to the advantage of themselves, who have all the means of um, of carrying the populace and taking advantage of them. So, right, I've been you, you will see that everything was wrong about it. And of course, you should know my country went through so many years of military government. So it's just now that we are trying to figure out ourselves in democratic means. Well, and talk about the role of the media, because as you mentioned, this is not a democracy. So the, the media, the source of information that most people get, is complicit in all of this, aren't they? Okay, I'll tell you. The reality, even up till now, is that most of those who own the media, especially newspapers, even now, radio, 
they, they, they are government. They are government, government cronies, government something. All they want to do is ensure that they, they maintain a kind of visibility that makes them to be powerful. Once you can control uh, the media, you are powerful. And they use it to advantage of their cronies in government, maybe military. Yes, they, yes, that happens around here a lot. And therefore, they will use everything. Um, if, if you watch it, many of them have other businesses. It's not that they're making so much money from the media they run. But they use the media as a way of establishing their influence and their ability to make and unmake. But meanwhile, they do it to the advantage of their sponsors, who are military, many, most of them military at that time. Oh, they do it to their advantage. And therefore, if you can control the media, uh, the military at that time, they see you as a very... Um, as a veritable instrument for them to keep perpetrating themselves there and, of course, um, uh, giving the public the image of someone who has come to rescue them from some kind of bondage in the past. So most of them are friends to top military agents, uh, top military governors, um, top military men who are in government, actually. These businesses, so they are not making too much from that media. But in doing that, they are able to get other contracts for their very juicy contracts for their other businesses. It's, it, it, it's very common here. But, I, but maybe since we started this new journey in democracy, things are beginning to get it, some sanity. But it's still common. One of the, the many stories that unfolds in the book, Karamba, as I mentioned, an award-winning book, the author, Oke Oyanakan, is with us on the program. The book's available at bookventure.com. You can log on directly to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and get information on the book and be able to, to order that. It introduces us to many faces of the epidemic, the complex forces that perpetrate it. Uh, one of those, and you, you talk about this, Preachers, talk about the role of the church and preachers in sermons and how they go about addressing this issue in the country. Well, um, actually, the, the very preacher that uh, was featured there was, um, was, was, for me, was doing the right thing, exposing government to its congregation. And, and the government does not like it at all. They, they do not like it, even though you have others who may, who may be given wrong impressions. But um, the truth of the matter is the role played by government, and there's a woman there, madam, one madam there, who also led, uh, um, he, he led a kind of, Opposition against government. Yeah, she, she she was finally killed in the riot. Um, those are people who who began to rise up to stand against government. So uh, preachers, yes, many stood against government, insisting that well, we need to get things right personally for you not to fall into the traps of ending up with um, AIDS infections and things like that. And that woman that I portrayed in that book was, was a heroine. She was a heroine, although she ended up losing her life on account of that. Um, I might not have portrayed others, other, um, other preachers who, who probably saw it another way. But then you will know those kinds of preachers are also being fended for at the back. But this particular one I portrayed was um, he rose up in defense of the people and of course uh, propagating that everyone has to get his moral right. If you are married, you have to stick to one person, to one woman. Otherwise, you end up being consumed. By this new, by this new disease that, as far as he was concerned, was sent to punish offenders who probably will not go the right way. 
what kind of response are you getting there? You are shining a light on a very important topic, uh, issues involving the, the, the government, that, that type of thing. What kind of response? Is there any pressure on you? I think we lost for a second. Can you hear? Still hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you paid. Do you want me to re-ask the question, or did you hear it? Uh, can you can you ask the question again? Sure. Yeah. Let's do that, and I'll, I'll do it right now. What kind of pressure or response are you getting? You are shining a light on this important topic, and maybe doing it in a way that's not well, definitely doing it in a way that's not real flattering because of the the people that are perpetrating this. What kind of response are you getting? Is there any pressure on you to to silence this message? Um. Well, no response yet. There's no response yet in the sense that. I'll say one thing that um, uh, I have not really, uh, the book is not yet normally um, marketed in Nigeria. But, but I've had responses from Nigerians who are outside the country who have read it. And all of them are saying, no, you must let this book come into Nigeria and, and, uh, and, let it be popular, let it be marketed, let people hear. I know I'm going to get a lot of responses because I can tell you that book became almost like um, a prophecy. I'll tell you a story. You know, Global Fund, you, you heard about Global Fund before? Yes. Yeah. The, 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 the managed funds for TB, tuberculosis, for malaria, and for AIDS, Five years ago, about five or six years, you can still see it on their website. You see some of the stories on their website. A lot of these agencies that are being used, because when you bring funds in, they are, you have to manage it along with government agencies, government, um, government offices, uh, ministries of health. I, I'm being very blunt here. You have to manage it. And I can tell you that Global Fund featured on their website a lot of the funds that were terribly mismanaged, including my country. It was not limited to my country. That, that never happened by when I wrote the story. But when it turned out, when I saw it, I said, ha, ah, this book was prophetic. So when I saw that, I was glad that I wasn't uh, misrepresenting anything. If you go there, it's still there now. So it's, it's not something that anybody, it's just that some people may think, oh, he wrote the book because of us. I wrote it before that thing came, before Global One began to write all these reports. So in the book itself is prophetic. It is prophetic. The book we're talking about is Karamba. O.K. Yes. Oyanakan is the author yes, and our guest, multiple award winner. I knew this was going to happen. The time has gone by too quickly. A couple of minutes left in the program. What do you hope people will take from the book as they read the book, uh, will be appalled and shocked at how this is being conducted, the, what's, what's happening there? What do you hope that we do as readers of the book Karamba? Now, my one thing is this: when problems uh, are seen, uh, when problems are being approached here in the third world, not just in Nigeria alone, it shouldn't be simplified. It, it, it's a very complex thing. Anyone who reads the book will see one thing: there was in that book we have exploitation at the highest level in terms of frauds and all the things we mentioned. But when you get to the community level too, the same thing was going on, it's going on. Why? You see, within the Nigerian environment in the rural area, there are also classes of um, leaders and opinion makers and all that. And then you have some of these, uh, what do I call them? Medicine men. The 
fee on the ignorance of their local, of their rural dwellers. And that's where most of the population lives. They feed on their ignorance, saying, no, this aid that you are seeing is not, is, is the anger that the gods are, are inflicting on men who are veered out of their way. And they were using that to exploit the ignorant people. So education is very key, number one. Education of the populace in, in, in all the third world countries is very key because the moment you take ignorance out of it, it becomes difficult to manipulate the people. Once you do that, it becomes difficult. Then you can now begin to intervene in which is what is doing wrong because I can see between, between say, 15 years ago and now, the the um, AIDS, AIDS um, intervention has brought it down massively. It has been brought down massively. But after that, then you go in with, apart from general education, you now go in with specific health education for the people. Specific health education for the people. But there must be general education force that they, can, they will not be able to manipulate them. And, and that's what many, many of the elites in Nigeria are using and other places. Keep them in ignorance, and then you continue to exploit them. The book is Karamba, that's K-A-R-A-M-B-A. The author is O.K. Yonatakan, that's O-Y-E-N-E-K-A-N. The book's available at bookventure.com. You'll find it at Amazon. You can link it by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Okay, it's a it, it's such a powerful book, a multiple award winning book, and certainly justified an important message. Thank you so much for coming to us via Skype from Nigeria to talk about the the book. Thank you for being with us on the program. Continued success with with all the good work you're doing over there. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, Rick. I really appreciate talking and speaking with you. Thank you. The time goes by way too quickly, and uh, so much more. I'll direct you to the book, uh, Karamba, by the author O.K. Yonanakan, and information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program right after these messages. 